anyway, I just wanted to welcome Janice and I'm so thrilled that you're here. I'm going to let her start off because she's, uh, she's a little bit of a pro at this. Thank and, you. Uh, then um, we'll talk. I asked Doreen if I could start because, um, thank you. I asked Doreen if I could start because really what artists do is tell stories. And if you're not telling a story, nobody is interested. If you say, save the whales, uh, the ecology is screwed and we're not gonna have any air, nobody really cares. But if you tell a story or sing a song about two young people in love who can't kiss because there's not enough oxygen, then you have a story. So I asked if I could open with a story and then the song behind the story. Um, I started writing songs when I was 12, and I like to say that I wrote my first song at 12, I was published at 13, I made a record at 14, I had a hit at 15, and I was a has-been at 16. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much the arc of my career, it's been like this. Um, the first song I wrote was, or the first song I got to record is a song about a black boy dating a white girl, and it was 1965, 66, we recorded it for Atlantic Records, who gave it back to the producer, Shadow Morton, and said they couldn't put it out because of the subject matter. He took it to 22 major labels. They all turned it down. He finally found a major label at Ver Forecast, which we later discovered had been formed by MGM Records as a tax loss. So they signed up everyone in Greenwich Village that they thought would lose money, uh, myself, <laughs> <laughs> Richie Havens, Odetta, Laura Nero, The Blues Project, um, Al Cooper, yes. <laughs> so it didn't work out very well for them, but it worked out well for us because they released the record three times. And the third time, Leonard Bernstein went on television with it and gave me a pretty unprecedented 12 or 14 minutes Sunday night prime time where he castigated the radio stations for not playing it. So my record became a hit, and I was 15 and a half, 16. I didn't understand how powerful a song could be. And I started hearing things like a radio station in Atlanta was burned to the ground for playing it, or somebody at the Boston Globe was fired for quoting from it. But I did <laughs> what you do when you're an adolescent faced with the ununderstandable, I ignored it. So I was playing in California at a sold out concert and I went into my hit song, which I insisted on doing mid show because I didn't want to be a jerk and end with it because I felt that I had much more to offer um, as most artists do. And I heard a commotion coming from audience right. And of course, being as self-involved as any artist, I assumed they were talking about how fabulous I was. So I ignored it. And the commotion got a little louder and a little louder and a little louder. And finally, I stepped back from the microphone to find out what the fuss was. And just as I stepped back, a figure detached itself from the rest and he stood up and he cupped his hands around his mouth and he yelled at the top of his lungs, nigger, lover, go home. Remember, I'm 15 and a half, 16. It's 1966, Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney. I had never heard that word said out loud. I kept singing because I thought that's what a professional would do. And as I kept singing, he kept yelling. Then the people around him started yelling. And it became a really vicious chant of nigger lover, nigger lover, beep, beep, beep. Nigger lover, nigger lover, beep, 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 until I finally started to cry. I didn't want them to see me crying, so I walked off the stage with as much dignity as I could imagine. And then I ran to the ladies' room, and that's where the promoter found me, crying my eyes out. Well, the promoter had been in the box office. He said, what are you doing off stage? The show's not over. Sold out. And I said, well, they were calling me names. And he said, what do you think, calling you names and you left the stage? And I said, they were calling me nigger lover. And he said, you don't leave a stage because you're being called names. Again, this was Goodman, Schwerner, Cheney era. 
I, I was really scared. And I said, I'm not going back. And he said, you have to go back. And I said, I'm not going back. And we argued. <laughs> and then he said the one thing that would get me to go back. He looked at me and he said, I cannot believe the girl who wrote that song is a coward. Now, I'm Jewish, and I was raised to be a Maccabee. And I was taught that if I didn't do for others, there would be no one left to do for me. And I suddenly understood that I could not face my family again if I didn't go back out. So I went back out, and I started singing, and the chanting and the yelling continued. And I realized that these 20 or 30 people had spent a lot of money to come to my show to boo me off the stage. And then the most amazing thing happened. All the little 16-year-old volunteer ushers walked down the aisle and shone their flashlights in these people's faces. And suddenly they weren't quite so loud. And then the people behind them reached up and pulled them down into their seats. And they got quieter still. By the time the theater manager finally came to get them and kick them out, they were beaten. And they didn't walk out. They slunk like cowards. So in that one defining moment in my early years, I learned a great lesson, which is that a song in three minutes can take a bunch of 16-year-old ushers and turn them into heroes <laughs> and take a bunch of really evil-minded, petty people and show them up for the cowards that they are. <coughs> to my door, baby, your face is clean and shining black as night, my mama went to answer, you know, that you look so fine, now I could understand the tears and the shame, she called your boy instead of your name. When she wouldn't let you inside When she turned and said But honey, he's not our kind She said, I can't see you anymore, baby I can't see you anymore You walk me down to school, baby. Everybody's acting deaf and blind until they turn and say, Why don't you just stick to your own kind? My teachers all laugh, they're smirking stares, a cutting deep down in our affairs. Creatures of equality Think they believe it Then why won't they just let us be They say I can't see you anymore, baby I can't see you anymore One of these days I'm gonna stop my listening I'm gonna raise my head up high One of these days I'm gonna raise up my glistening wings and fly But that day will have to wait for a while Baby, I'm only society's child when we're older, things may change, but for now, this is the way they must remain. I say I can't see.
crying over here. <laughs> That's fine. Amazing. That song has just torn me apart all my life. Every time I hear it, I cry. I'm sorry. A bit. Yeah. No, it's good. You know, it's it's.